Bitcoin extending its losses this morning after it fell below $40,000 for the first time since early December yesterday. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin slid more than 2% and traded above $39,000, but at one point traded as low as $38,800. What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. I can't make this video with my freaking cat right there. <laughs> Did you just hear her? Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna start over. What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now, I know it may not seem like a great day. In fact, according to this right now, we could see that Bitcoin is roughly down about 20%. And, you know, having a look at this candle with this wick right here, generally speaking, that's not good, right? That looks like a very ugly monthly candle so far. You could see when we have wicks to the top on these red candles, generally speaking, you do have these potential corrections to the downside, right? So is that, are we going into a bear market, right? I've had people asking me that. Are, are, is Bitcoin just, is that it? Is the cycle over? Are we never reaching new all-time highs again? Was the ETF a complete disaster of a launch? What I want to go over today is the stuff that we've been going over for years on this channel, right? And if you've been following, we have always been one to essentially look at the charts. Now, this particular event, this ETF news event, had a lot to do with maybe why the price could have pumped as fast as it did. Because remember, even I was a little bit shocked about how quickly we got up to these levels, but we've always had that 47, 48,000. We said maybe there was a maximum of around $52,000 from our major falling wedge pattern. And that is in fact what we got. But what's crazy is if you ignore everything that's going on, you ignore everything in the news and, and everything that people are talking about, and you just look at the charts, you are going to find something very surprising. And what I want to go over today is how Bitcoin is playing out extremely similarly to things that it's done in the past. I want to talk about, you know, these critical levels that we're experiencing right now and ultimately what we could expect for the rest of the year. Kind of a yearly outlook. Okay, we got the ETF. We got Bitcoin to almost 50,000. What's next? Is that it? Is there no more news events? Is, is, are we going into this bear market? Okay. Let's just stop right there. There's been a lot of people on the channel, obviously newer people, and it's fine. Maybe you've never experienced something like this before. So we're going to break it down today. I hope you guys stick around for this. You know, I usually put the TA at the end of the video and, you know, not everybody stays around for it. But again, there is this old saying, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And again, what we'll get into why, you know, we could be where we have been in potentially these overheated areas. But just looking right here, you know, you have to be realistic about what you're seeing in the charts. Bitcoin had a 150% run up to the top. And now we had this parallel channel that was forming, right? And you could see we had the resistance here. We had the resistance here. We had a beautiful amount of support right down here. But as you could see, we are officially starting starting to lose that area right there, right? And you can see now that area has acted as resistance. And honestly, even if I drag this out to the lower level, right? Let's go, let's go down from the, from the bottom of this move right here, you know, take it up through this, through this wick. Well, what do we have right here, guys? We have this test. We have this bounce off of this area. You could argue maybe we came close right here. And again, it's acting as resistance. So this is showing that right now there is in fact more resistance than there is selling. And we are going to go into what's going on right now, you know, with the ETF inflows, obviously grayscale Bitcoin trust having a lot to do with multiple reasons why you're actually seeing this sell pressure, which will go over on top of the fact that it looks like once again, we can't seem to get away from Sam and friends because apparently FTX is also involved in some of this as well as more Mount Gox FUD, which I don't even know. This has to be the thousandth time on the channel we've talked about this. But hey, if you're new, we'll go over it again. So what I was saying yesterday, essentially, and I really want you guys to pay attention because it's going to help put this in a perspective for you. You know, I don't want to sit here and feed you a bullish you know, case if, if I'm not seeing it and I'm not going to be bearish just because it's the cool thing to do. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing. And right here, you could see that we did have the S&P breaking an all-time high. Generally speaking, we've showed you that when the all-time high breaks for the uh, uh, S&P, uh, you know, stocks, whatever, that Bitcoin tends to go sideways. I'll, I'll show you in a minute why that is. But right here, if we switch this to the daily, you know, it's it, it's looking a little indecisive here. 
right? I mean, look at these past two days of trade, massive pump up to that level. And now it's kind of like the markets really don't know what to do. Should we keep pumping? Should we have a retrace back down? And you know, what we don't want is a bit of a double top, right? Like what we saw back here with Bitcoin, where we couldn't, we broke the previous high, but we couldn't stay up there for over a week. So then the market just started tanking, right? Now that was Bitcoin. That wasn't the S&P. If the S&P was to do that, you know, obviously you would have, uh, I got to zoom way out here. Um, well, let me go to the weekly. It's a lot easier to see here. You know, essentially what you'd be doing was the same thing, right? You'd have that double top. And then would you have that rejection? What would that do for the Bitcoin price? Well, I don't want to go over this again. We went over this, but you know, with the exception of 2019 in which Bitcoin just continued to pump, basically this line is when we hit an all time high. Bitcoin goes sideways for a while, March, April, May, June, July. And then we take off. I'm not going to go over this again, but you could see right here, dump sideways up, right? Sideways up, sideways down. And here we are today. So probability would say that we're, we're going to be due for some type of an accumulative event, a sideways chop event. We also have the fact that the DXY has had four consecutive weeks of green candles. And we know that when this happens, it tends to have an inverse relationship with things that are, you know, potentially risk on, which I would probably still put Bitcoin in that category for the majority of the investors. Now, if you were watching this channel for a while, and you know, this CME gap was put in in December 4th of last year. This was the end of last year. And we were talking about this area. And we said that there was a likelihood that we were going to close the CME futures gap. In fact, historically speaking, I, uh, I kind of lost track of the per percentage, but it's only maybe like two or three that have never closed. So it's something around 94% chance that these things are going to close. And you can see right here, what was interesting about the candle that we did get yesterday was we got the close and then it actually tried to come back up and close back above that gap, right? Which was to be expected. But then of course we opened today and it's lower. So the good news, the good news is we don't have to worry about this anymore. We close the gap. We can take that off of our charts. Now, having a look at what we were talking about, and literally you guys can go back to any video on this channel, at least I'd say within the past five months, just literally go, go back and watch any random video with any random TA. And we were very, very bullish on this falling wedge breakout. And, you know, right around that area, when we had that retest, and, you know, we got above, I guess it was, it was close to about 19,001, but around 18,008 was where we said, okay, pretty sure the bottom is definitely in at this point. You know, you take that level and it brings us right up here to the 0.618, which is exactly where we touch. Now, look, guys, we still have this parabolic trend right here. So Bitcoin could theoretically come down to about $36,000 and we would still be in a parabolic trend. Now, I was in the camp that I was saying, and I was saying this before the ETF, I'm not 100% certain that this trend is going to hold. And the reason for that is simply because we've never really seen this type of a parabolic move before a Bitcoin having without having some form of a correction, right? But, you know, before we move on, and this is probably one of the most famous screenshots I've ever showed on the channel, you know, this was my first bull run. This was the bull run of 2017. And during this bull run, you could see that there were multiple pullbacks, right, of 40%, 25%. Over here, 36%, 36, 31, 38, 38, and 30, okay? And this was during a bull run. This was literally during a bull run where, you know, yeah, we'd have a correction, but then you'd come back a few months later and the price would double. And then you come back a few months later and the price would double, right? So this is expected and it's actually healthy. You don't want the markets to go back up, you know, indefinitely forever. Now, if you were to look for a short-term bounce just based on the trend lines, we're hitting that area right now. You can see right here, if you take this trend and you extend it, we've had support, we've had support, support, this right here, this was a little bit of a bear trap, right? It fell into all of these EMAs right here, and then it acted again as support multiple times. So if Bitcoin was looking to have a bounce, okay, short term, keep in mind, I'm not saying that we're going to go to the moon, that would be around these areas, right? So yeah, this, this is ultimately, you could say target one hit, CME futures gap closed, trend line hit. But again, we have these major weeklies down here. And these er these averages are a lot more important than just a simple trend line that basically started in the beginning of the year. You know, these averages have been moving during the majority of Bitcoin's history, depending on which one that you're looking at. The two most important of these being the 200 EMA and the 200 weekly, right? And those are sitting the lowest at 27.6 and we're having 30,005 as the 200 weekly moving average. So it would be very, very unlikely in a bull market to see Bitcoin fall below that area. Now, there were some other warning signs 
that we can look at, right? For example, if we look at the wave edge indicator, you could see this right here, these indicators of massive selling and potential reversal on the, uh, on the, uh, the weekly right here. We had three of them, right? We had three of them right here. So that also showed that we were going down. Now, keep in mind, we've only had one of them so far right here, but now do they have to come in sets of threes? No, that's probably just a coincidence. But you could see from that point, Bitcoin did in fact have a, a, you know, a correction, right? Actually fell below the EMA ribbon. Um, and this is what we were worried about, having sort of a, you know, a, a, a mid-cycle rally, right? But I mean, ultimately, if you take this entire move, you know, you actually take this whole market, it was generally moving up, you know, but you did have those moments of sideways. So again, and I'm going to get into the halving as well to just show you guys. So does this mean that, you know, we have to go down to some of these crazy levels? Well, I mean, look right here, we got it, came down, went back up and put in a second top again, right? So that's not saying that we couldn't do something like that here, fall into this EMA ribbon, you know, because mostly if you look at this, when you are in a parabolic bull trend, you generally are supported by the top of the EMA ribbon. And yes, you can fall into it sometimes, but it's really once you start to lose that and get below this purple, this purple uh, 89 right here, once that acts as the resistance, that's really when you want to worry. Well, right here, you can see we haven't even gotten down to it yet. And the lowest level of the 89 is sitting at about $30,800. And based on some of those previous, you know, pullbacks, if we were to pull back to that level, okay, that's about a 36% pullback. Not uncommon for, you know, what Bitcoin can do. Main thing that's important is looking at the wave edge down here is that we have gone into an area of bullish trajectory, right? You can see, generally speaking, once we flip that, we tend to stay above it. And as long as we don't fall back below the zero line right here, which if we do, that tends to be generational buying opportunity, then everything is still saying that Bitcoin is still in a mid to long term bull run. Same thing with the money flow on the weekly. What it is showing is that we are, you know, definitely over uh, a little, little overbought. That's for sure. I mean, look at this RSI right here. We did get the red dot that was offering a bit of caution. And we still, even though, yes, we have this parallel channel, the main, uh, you know, that we have down here, the main trend is this right here right? So if we were to fall straight down, which interestingly enough would probably line up with the heart line, that puts Bitcoin at around $32,000. So why do I keep, you know, reiterating these levels? I keep reiterating them because if you look historically, and this is the part of the video that I really, really want you to pay attention to, and this is why we were so adamant about the 0.618 Fibonacci, is because history obviously doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. And as you can see right here, you know, these are very easy. These are the Fibonacci levels of the cycle back here from, you know, 2013 to the halving in 2016. And you could see right here that once we had the halving, okay, the price of Bitcoin right here was not higher than the previous all-time high. And, you know, it might have had a little bit of a rally leading into it, but it then fell down. Now, interestingly enough, look at this. You can see right here, it went up to the 0.618 and then we had a pullback. And as we could see right here, this pullback from the 0.618 down to here was about 40%. Now we didn't quite get down to the 0 .2, uh, 0.236, but we did get to the 0.382, okay? If we head on over here, we had something similar, not exact, but similar, right? History rhymes, it doesn't necessarily repeat. Again, here's Bitcoin coming out of the bear market. We have this mid-cycle rally. Here we are, the 0.618. Now this, again, this is COVID. so. Very difficult for this one, because if you actually look right here, I would say that this crash wanted to stop at around the 0.236, which brought it down to around uh, you know, a 50% crash. Now, obviously we ended up having a 70% crash, but again, if you zoom in here, I think it's pretty obvious where this structure was going. I mean, look at all this area right here, and then this is the COVID crash where all the markets crashed, but look what happened right after that. One, two, three, four. So basically we had a month of upwards. So, I mean, yeah, is it possible to have a black swan event? Sure. But again, it's called a black swan event because you can't see it because it's a black swan event. So here's the having. What do we do? Well, we continue sideways, right? And we don't really break until, well, I'm going to get to until in a second. I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what we could expect moving forward, but just to point out the similarities again, we have the 0.618, right? So, you know, assuming that we have that correction, well, we've already had about 20%. If we stop at the 0.386, that's around 35, or we can come all the way back down. You know, if you think we're going to go to the 0.236 again, that's around $27,800. But again, I don't believe that's going to happen because without that black swan, 
you know, event, we would have never fallen below that. Now let's also look at something else. Let's look at what happens when we do have the halving, which by the way is coming up in April. So here's the halving back in 2016. And if we just, you know, go out here, how long did it take Bitcoin before it broke the new all time high? Well, it took about 259 days for Bitcoin to break the new all time high, right? What did it do over here? Well, keep in mind, we were not above uh, the previous all time high by the halving. We did chop sideways for about 147 days. Then we started to take off. And how long did it take until we broke this all time high? Well, that took about 189 days, right? So it was a little bit shorter. Well, if we come over here, we're obviously approaching the halving as well. And we know that Bitcoin is never higher than the previous high leading into the halving. And we know that the halving usually is a little bit of a disappointing event when it happens, right? It generally goes sideways. And the reason is because it takes a little bit of time for that shock to go into the system. The same way that, you know, the the, the, the printing the money, right? The, the inflation took time to set in and the rate cuts didn't, or the, excuse me, the rate hikes didn't have an immediate, um, you know, response from the markets. The same thing is gonna end up happening with the, with the rate cuts and the same thing happens with the halving. So come out here, and what do you guys want to say? You want to do like 200 days? We'll just make a little average between 189 to two, whatever. We'll say 200 days, right? So, you know, if we come out here around 200 days, roughly, you know, that says that Bitcoin shouldn't put in a new all time high until about November of this year. And, you know, this goes back to my statement of saying that I think we can see a new all time high for the end of this year for Bitcoin, but you have to be patient. You have to understand that we are looking for a potential sideways, maybe accumulation. But of course, looking historically here, heading into the green Gaussian flip, you could see that not only does it generally act as support, um, and, it, and it does kind of tell you when we're, you know, when we're coming back down into the end of these markets, but it usually never really comes back, right? But you can see there are still massive corrections even after the flip, right? We have the flip here. Bitcoin falls 50%. Still on this upward trajectory. Look at this. Crazy. Look at this. 81%. Guys, this was an 81% correction for Bitcoin in just two weeks. I mean, imagine that. No, I don't think that's going to happen again. But again, getting back here, you know, we flip into the green. We're obviously in the bull run for a while with, you know, again, multiple 30, 40% pullbacks along the way. And keep in mind, guys, this is all being done without institutional inflows, okay? Same thing here, right? We flip into the green. Now, okay, th this one, okay, a little, bit, a little bit of an outlier because we did in fact go down, right? We did go down. But ultimately, really, if you take out, again, just kind of scribble out, like I, I know I keep saying ignore COVID, but really it was a black swan. Kind of scribble that out and we're just riding along on the heart line right? Of the Gaussian channel. And again, we continue to the upside with it even acting as support. Well, we've broken above it again. So what this is telling me is that, yes, we could be looking for Bitcoin to follow a very similar situation. Now, again, I don't know what's going to happen with the halving or not the halving with the, um, the ETF. You know, this is the first time we've ever seen it. We don't know how this is going to affect the demand. We know we have some sell pressure right now, but, um, you know, it's just something to point out. And also something kind of interesting, just I, 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 this is not anything to do with Bitcoin, but for anybody out there that's been looking into the altcoin market, the altcoin market, uh, Ethereum total two, meaning basically every coin outside of Bitcoin actually has in fact just flipped green. Okay. So this is telling me that the long-term trends are in fact intact, but the short-term trends could get a little bit turbulent. And there's a lot of things going on right now with GBTC, which I'll get into. But as we said, the difference between, you know, um, you know, a protocol upgrading to a mainnet or something like that, that's a one-off. The difference is that the ETF is not a one-off. It's not a, oh, great, what's the next big news, right? And I'm seeing a lot of the bears celebrating. The same bears that were calling for 10K, 12K, they were bearish the whole way up. Now they're saying, see, I told you so. I told you so after a 150% move and now we have a 20% correction. I still think the better the better play was buying and accumulating Bitcoin all through 2023. And again, what I'm saying right now is that we may have one more opportunity. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to be new on the channel and say, yeah, okay, one more opportunity, blah, blah, blah. All right. Yeah. Hindsight's hindsight. I don't know. Bookmark this video and I'll see you in a year. I, from what I'm looking at, from what we've been watching, if you don't even talk about the ETF inflows, everything we're seeing right now is showing natural, healthy correction. There are some people that were holding GBTC that wanted to get out. Maybe it was a sell the news event for some people, but to say that it in and of itself is a nothing but sell the news event that's going to send us into another multi-year bear market, number one, that would be ridiculous. That would look so bad on behalf of BlackRock and all these ETFs. Do you really think they want to launch this product, push it to their clients, 
just to watch their clients just basically lose money indefinitely forever, like, like a Spirit Airline or something like that. No, I don't think. That would be silly, it would be stupid. Just use your brain here. Like, I'm all for the conspiracies, I'm a conspiracy theorist myself, I don't trust anything that I read or hear, but you gotta be honest, that would just be outright stupid. Just gotta say that out loud. If you think any different, that's fine. You're all entitled to your opinion and time will tell. Now, obviously, Jim Cramer, which some people, you know, inverse Cramer, he tends to be bullish when, <laughs> when you should be bearish and bearish when you should be bullish. So he's been out here and, you know, he says, nasty beginning to the Bitcoin sell-off. Someone's probably going to try to make a stand here. But as we said last night, you can't have an asset double in value by hundreds of billion dollars in anticipation for an ETF. And then almost no one show up. Well, I don't know if Kramer is aware of this, but this was actually arguably one of the most successful ETF launches of all time. I mean, I will say by every measure, this launch has gone incredibly well. We've really seen a groundswell of interest um, coming from many directions. When you look at volumes, when you look at flows, when you look at how the, the product itself is trading, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, what we like to refer to as iBit, has traded more than three and a half billion since its launch just a little over a week ago. We've brought in more than 1.6 billion in flows. We're the number one issuer, new issuer, both in terms of volume as well as flows. 3.5 billion is obviously nothing to scoff at. Now, something that could be skewing the data just a little bit is the fact that some of those inflows are in fact being recycled, right? We have to call a spade a spade. It is what it is. It's not all brand new capital coming in. That's part one of the problem, right? Just because the ETF launched, you have to understand, we were anticipating it. There were some people that were sitting on the sidelines waiting to get into Bitcoin, but there's also a lot of people that truly just didn't care. Literally, I'm not trying to be like a bear. They just didn't care. Now that the ETF has been approved, now that they have the opportunity to allocate to that vehicle, they will slowly start to pull in. Same thing happened with gold. I showed you guys the charts twice already that when the gold ETF launched, it went sideways for 10 months. Then it pumped 325%. Was that a failure? Well, for the first 10 months, I bet a lot of people said it was a failure. I bet some of those people got pissed when they bought only to found they were, find out they were down 25, 30% 10 months into it, right? Probably seemed like a just complete failure of a launch and yet gold literally went over 325% and just recently put in a new all-time high. Um, although it put in basically the same high over the course of 10 years, but that is for another story. The first high I think is the one we're really talking about. Adding to the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust situation, which there's a lot of different scenarios. Number one, maybe these people just don't want this high premium. They want to go switch into a lower premium, you know, or they had these discounts. Number two, maybe they bought high and maybe if they sell now, they can tax loss harvest, right? Which would be great for their taxes. Another thing to note is that to those individuals that are in fact tax loss harvesting, the law states that you are not allowed to rebuy that asset for 30 days. So that could be also, we may be seeing those just sort of sitting on the side, nothing really going on. They can't legally reallocate that capital for, for, for another month, right? These are all possibilities. The other culprit, of course, is our buddy, Sam Bankman fried Bloomberg, they said that FTX bankruptcy estates are two thirds of the way done selling with the Grayscale Bitcoin holdings. So that's good, right? but they still have another 33% to go. Not to mention the fact that we also had Kathy Wood rotating out of it as well. So it says one third left should continue to sell into today, but you should expect a bounce soon, right? So could we be expecting a bounce soon? Sure. You know, I'm sure it didn't help that one of the most watched videos on CNBC is Jamie Dimon, 318,000 views, basically calling Bitcoin a tool for, you know, all nefarious activities. So again, there's a lot of different factors. There's going to be a lot of FUD. There's going to be a lot of hype. But at the end of the day, if you didn't know the ETF was happening, this was expected, right? We didn't know six months ago when or if the ETF was going to be approved. Like, well, we, well, we said if it was going to be approved, but we didn't really know when right? We didn't know, which is why I was shocked that we got to that 47,000K level as fast as we did. I didn't think we were going to do that. I will admit that. But at the end of the day, that's exactly where we went. We went to 49, right? A little bit higher. Um, obviously, you have chances to overshoot those. But my point is, that was the level we had talked about. And just kind of remembering, if you go back, go read some of the comments on some of those videos. No way we're getting 47K. 
impossible, not happening this year. Also, just no ETF launch, just lots of negativity. And yet that all happened. And yet here we are today, Bitcoin going up 150%. We have an ETF approval opening the floodgates for tons of capital, not just today, not just next week, not just next month. Okay. It's only been two weeks. Jesus, the short-term memory of some people, uh, short-term, not memory, short-term, uh, is, what is it? Uh, mine's, uh, I can't even talk right now. Short-term goldfish. <laughs> this is really bad guys. Attention span, attention span. There we go. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, and, and some people don't have that attention span and I apparently can't speak today, but my point that I'm trying to say, uh, with, with these famous, uh, rants and ramblings that I go on is this is not a sell the news event in and of itself. It has opened up the gates. It is something that is here to stay. As education continues, as the GBTC and the FTX and even the Mt. Gox, which I don't care, sell your 120K Bitcoin, the market's going to absorb it like that. It literally is. Like I said, it's actually crazy that we haven't dumped harder, considering, considering, right? And, you know, if you come over here and you have a look, it was broken down pretty well by Invest Answers. Bitcoin ETF fund flow scorecard, good and bad. Well, the bad is that Grayscale has dumped a ton of Bitcoin. For the eighth day in a row, Grayscale transferred an additional 18,500 Bitcoin to Coinbase, which is insane. That's a lot of selling. But the good news is that the majority of the sell-off involved FTX, which has now completed its sale, apparently offloading 2.5 million shares. So I guess it's done, according to this. I mean, I haven't been following it that closely, but I guess he's saying it's over or it's close to being over. And despite the Grayscale sell-off, there's been a net inflow of 1.1 billion equivalent to 28,000 Bitcoin. Growth observed in the Fidelity Bitcoin Trust is actually faster than BlackRock, which is kind of interesting. And the total amount of Bitcoin held by ETFs are higher now than when the ETFs had started trading. So if they're obviously higher now than when they had started trading, then overall, that means even though, yes, we are having these net outflows and there is that recycling from GBTC, we are starting to tip the boat the other way. So we have the fundamentals, we have the news, we have the ETF, right? And we had an amazing 2023. 2024 is probably going to play out like a lot of the other cycles where you're going to have people want to take profits. They're going to sell. Let them sell. Great. That, that's awesome. You know, I mean, hey, take profits. If you want to take profits, nobody's saying don't take profits. I mean, look, guys, I had to take profits. I had to take profits recently and it wasn't just for me. It's because I have to pay my bills. I have to pay my taxes. Literally, I'm not kidding. So for me, that area was good. Now, when I say offloaded, we're talking, you know, just, just enough percent. That's how I live. I live off of my crypto. Pretty crazy to admit that. But if you've been following, you guys know how we do it on this channel. But, you know, for, for my long-term HODL position, there's no reason for me to be freaking out when I know that we have the halving. I know that the grayscale Bitcoin uh, sale is eventually going to be done. We have the lowest level of Bitcoin on exchanges since way, 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 way back here. You know, in, uh, w w when is this? This is like May of 2018. So eventually all of these are going to come to fruition. So I just kind of want to end there guys, because I feel like I don't like always want to make these videos because I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but you have to pay attention to the charts. And there are some people that absolutely hate them. They think it's hocus pocus. They think it's magic. Doesn't mean anything. I was the same guy. I thought the same thing. When we first started the channel, I never even looked at a chart. Not even once. Didn't even look at it. I would just buy altcoins whenever, you know, buy Bitcoin, whatever. And it was in the bear market of 2018 that I started realizing how much the charts, the indicators, the levels, the price action matters. And the reason that it matters is because it's kind of one of those self-fulfilling prophecies, right? It's true. It sounds stupid, but it's like it kind of happens because everyone is looking at the same chart and everyone is seeing the same things and human reactions to fear and greed are always the same. Right. So that's why we, you know, look at this. I also just, I just want to end on this note. This is so funny. So, you know, Elizabeth Warren came out talking about this uh, U.S. government report that rogue nations are using crypto to dodge sanctions against national security and all this illicit activity. And readers actually corrected her and said that within this actual uh, document itself that she's referring to, the report actually came out and said, no, Actually, the dollar is used for more nefarious. And by the way, the comments, the comments are gold. The comments are hilarious if you haven't seen them on this post. I mean, you even had Senator Cynthia Lummis uh, coming in saying 900 million in non-crypto fiat currency, by the way, money laundering versus 900,000. Crypto is clearly not the problem. Criminals and bad actors are. It would be a historic mistake to crush an entire emerging industry based on incorrect data. So I just love when I see these people get owned all the time. And speaking about guys who have been owned, there is this funny video. I just want to end on this. Hits Blunt. 
What if Gary is Satoshi? Something that's freely available, the Bitcoin core code, it's actually under a copyright license here at MIT, which makes it free. That was Satoshi Nakamoto's decision. It wasn't that, well, maybe Nakamoto does work here. <laughs> it's a clue. So again, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Now, of course, you know, this video is designed to sort of be more of an educational opportunity to look into what I'm seeing and why I feel a certain way based on the data, right? These are just statistics. It's not my opinion, right? I don't know what the ETF is going to do. I don't know. And no one can say they truly know. I know that it will be net positive long-term for Bitcoin. I don't know what it's going to do short-term. We've never had it. The closest thing that I have is the gold ETF. And that went sideways for 10 months. That's all I know, right? Could that happen to Bitcoin? Possibly. And it would also coincide specifically with what we usually see with the halving and not putting in the all-time high until, you know, a few, uh, a few months afterwards, right? But again, it still does open up the possibility without the ETF, just with the technicals, just with what we've been looking at for a potential new all-time high, maybe sometime November, December. Now, it could come sooner than that, right? I mean, we got to 47 quicker than I thought we were going to. I thought it was going to take longer. I was wrong on that pleasantly wrong, I suppose. I mean, it would have been nice to accumulate, but if you feel like you missed out on the move or you don't know what's going on right now, or you're worried, you know, if you don't have the conviction and you can't sleep at night, well, then you might be allocated to maybe some very speculative, you know, coins or something like that. When it comes to Bitcoin, I sleep like a baby. I don't worry about these dips. I have experienced I don't even know how many dips, a 30, 40, 50% in, in, since I've been in crypto, probably like 20, maybe 15, 20 of these. I don't know. So it doesn't shock me anymore. And if you do believe in the long-term, you know, Bitcoin narrative, which I surely do. And I definitely think the million dollar Bitcoin is a thing. Who knows? We can even go higher with money printing and inflation. Then the way that I look at it is 2023 was a great ride. I'm glad that everyone was was on board on that. And, and, and 2024, I believe, is still going to be an amazing year. I just think there may be some of that typical expected turbulence into the having, out of the having, right? So again, this is just, you know, not talking about the ETF. This is just talking about what we see in the charts and what we look at. And this is what we've been doing on the channel. So, you know, again, to my new subscribers, I love you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys appreciate this type of insights, but this is what we've been doing for years. We've been following charts. We've been following the money flow. We've been following, you know, the, the, basically what Bitcoin's been doing. But recently we were focused more on the news because I thought that was a big deal. And I still think it is a big deal. And I think it will continue to prove a lot of naysayers wrong who think that the ETF was the ultimate sell the news. That's it. We're going into a bear market. I just don't think that's happening. I think this is a healthy mid-cycle correction. And I do believe that any dips that we see now until that post, you know, basically in a nutshell, if any dips that you see now until the end of the year, I think are by the dips, not financial advice. Just based on history, that's what I'm thinking. And again, guys, I, I do want to just uh, mention, if you want to go trade, obviously LevX is great, um, but you know some people want to trade decentralized. If you do feel comfortable holding your own uh, coins while you're trading, Apex Pro, amazing exchange, incredible liquidity, totally decentralized. You never have to put your money on a centralized exchange. I have the tutorial and uh, very low fees, like 60 cents, 20 cents per trade roughly. And also side note, if you actually looked at the Apex token, um, which we had mentioned in the original video when I did it, yeah, that's up like 1,700%. So um, anyway, guys, that's it for me. Until next time, obviously stay crypto. I love you. And of course, peace out.